You know, in what other country than Joe Biden's America can illegal immigrants waltz over an unsecure border? In what other country can an illegal immigrant get immediate housing, free food, legal counseling, free educational subsidies? In what other country can illegal immigrants get free flights and bus rides and transportations to the city or the town of their choosing? The left knows they can flood this country with millions of people. If the left can promise those millions of people that the Democrats are the party that will feed them, will house them, will transport them, will educate them for free at the American taxpayers' back, and that Republicans will take that away. Then the Democrats can use the millions of illegal immigrants as political pawns to increase their power. It's shameless. It's wrong. It's un-American. And for years, conservatives have warned about this. We've warned about the left attempting to allow illegals to vote in elections. But it was made fun of. It was a joke. It would never happen. It was labeled, in fact, as a conspiracy theory. Yet here we are. I'm sorry that the gentleman from New Jersey has left the chamber because I could reassure and console him very quickly. It is against the law for non-citizens to vote in federal elections. That is embodied in federal statute, um, and it is a crime for someone to attempt to do that. So that's not what's on the table here today. What's on the table is whether a locality, in this case, the District of Columbia, should be permitted to allow non-citizens to participate in local elections for things like school board and city council and advisory neighborhood commissions. The gentleman from New Jersey should be apprised at some point that the, the great state of New Jersey allowed non-citizen voting between 1776, when the country began, and 1820. So for a half century, it was allowed uh, in his state and obviously did not lead to the, the downfall of the republic. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I want to start by thanking my friend from Louisiana for a, a very substantive and dignified uh, debate on this subject, which I know uh, attracts strong views uh, across the aisle. I just want to restate some essential points for people to keep in mind. One is that what we're talking about is local elections in the District of Columbia. So the question is who will get to vote for the school board members and the council members, who will get to vote for the advisory neighborhood commissioners, which is uh, an institution which I think is unique to the District of Columbia, which is neighborhoods that have elected representatives who get to weigh in on things like the bar time closings and restaurant licenses and stuff like that. Th that's really what we're talking about here. Um, the people in D.C. only have one non-voting delegate to the District of Columbia, no voting representation here, no voting representation um, in the Senate. So uh, the non-citizens, the 500 or so who are registered today, can't even vote for Eleanor Holmes Norton. So it goes to the question of local elections. Um, I'm, you know, I'm certain that most members of Congress and most Americans certainly didn't expect that the House of Representatives would be spending uh, so much time debating this relatively minute matter, and I dare say trivial matter, in the context of all of the national emergencies and crises we're facing today, but it does seem to be part of an election year assault on the District of Columbia. Uh, it's a lot easier to kick D.C. around a little bit than to solve the gun crisis, which has gotten to the point where gun violence is now the leading cause of death in America for young people under the age of 18. It's a lot easier to kick D.C. around a little bit <clears throat> than to conf confront the climate crisis, which is bearing down on all of us across the country. So uh, the gentleman has made one very powerful point, which is constitutionally we have the authority to do this because the people in D.C. are still under the authority of Congress under Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17. That's why they want out. They want us to use our power over the district in all cases whatsoever to modify the boundaries of the District of Columbia. <clears throat> and to yield the residential areas to the creation of a new state. And the power of Congress to do that was established in 1846, when Alexandria and Arlington and Fairfax County were retroceded to Virginia. 
So we've got the power to redraw it, and we can redraw it, and D.C. would actually be larger population-wise than two other states in the union. They want to exist on a plane of political quality. They want to be able to have the right to go through the same political experience the gentleman talked about in Texas. At one point, they wanted to grant non-citizens the right to vote in local elections, and at another point, they didn't. That's all they're asking for, the right to make their own decisions for themselves. And I dare say, no matter how benevolently motivated my good friend from Louisiana is, or I am as a representative from Maryland, no one is more interested in the welfare of the people in the District of Columbia than the people who actually live there. And with that, I will yield back.